Good morning, I'm Pastor Steve, and on this lovely day that God has created, we are blessed to gather here at First Church. Welcome. I want to invite you to take your song sheets in hand. If you don't have one, hold up your hand, because we've got extras. Everybody's got one? Almost. Chuck's going to make sure if you don't, or Paul, that you do. Um, I'll invite you to stand, and then we're going to lift our voices up to the Lord. But before we do, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, Lord, and we're so thankful that through the work and the power of your Spirit, you have gathered us here today. For those that are joining us online, we just welcome you, and we're so glad that you could be with us today as well. We ask that, God, that you would move through the work and the power of your Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So please stand. If you don't have a song sheet, hold your hand up high. Okay.
Lord, we know that you are with us every step of the way. We know that you care and you love us deeply. And, and yet, Lord, we know that there are those out there that think that no one understands the anguish and pain that they are struggling with. And so we pray for them in this time, Lord. We pray that you would give them the peace and the hope that we know can only come through the work and the power of your Holy Spirit and your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to turn our hearts to you as we offer these special people and lift them up to your care.
this morning, Lord, you have heard our praises and you have heard our cries of our hearts. And Lord, you see not only our tears and feel our pain, but you also feel the joy and the thanksgiving that we have lifted up both in song and in our praise time. We ask that you would be with all of us. Give us healing for those that are suffering from a broken spirit and bodies. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. This morning, we're going to be looking at the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 13. But before we go there, I'm just curious this morning. How many of you know what this is? Garden weasel. A garden weasel. Well, this is not quite, but very close. Um, it's called a scuff hoe. Uh, it's something that I saw in the Netherlands a long time ago when I first got married. We went over to the Netherlands and um, went to something called the Floriana. And came back, I had one, and then when we moved, I somehow lost it, and so I went to a friend in town named Jean Helson, and I said, do you think you could make me something like this? And Jean looked at the shape I had drawn on the napkin at the round table, and he went, sure. He said, I got an old saw blade. And so he cut that out, how, I don't know, um, and welded it onto this rod, and he said, you get a handle, and so I got me a handle that's big enough for me because I'm tall. And this thing goes along the ground and it cuts weeds. And I'm just curious, most of you may not have one of these, it's kind of a one of a kind, but how many of you have used a hoe to weed in a garden? Raise your hands. Okay. Um, how many of you have uh, inadvertently taken more than the weed when you were home. I don't know about you, maybe you can see it, but this thing is really sharp and pointed on the edges. And it's really cool because it'll cut on the push and the pull and it does this incredible job. There's one problem. It's sharp and pointed on the edge. And if you're not careful, as I have learned, you can take out a pepper plant or a tomato plant quick smart and there's nothing you can do about it. So this morning we're talking about weeds and weeding. And I want to invite you to turn with me to Matthew's Gospel. For those of you who brought your Bibles, those of you at home today, we're going to turn to chapter 13. And we're going to read about the parable of the weeds today. We're going to pick up with the 24th verse. I invite you to listen to the words from the book that we love. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. And when the weeds sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. Now the owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds, and then in tie them in bundles to be burned, and then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. And then we skip ahead to verse 36, where we pick up. And then he left the crowd and went into the house, and his disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. And he answered the one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. 
The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. And as the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. And the Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out his kingdom, everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And they will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Here ends this reading from the book that we love. Thanks be to God. So I don't know about you, but it's, um, I listen to this passage and I listen to the words of Jesus and I go, you know, I think with this hoe, I can do a pretty good job weeding. And I think I can tell the weeds from the wheat. Except if you were to open up the Greek in this text, the word weeds in here is the word tares. And evidently, if you were to look at a tear and you didn't know what it was, you might think it was wheat. It's very hard to tell from wheat. And I don't know about you, but when the plants are young in the garden, how easy is it to tell the good plants from the weeds? Now, quack grass is pretty identifiable, and so are some things like clover. Those are the things I find in my landscape. And weeding them out really isn't that hard, and it's pretty easy to leave the plants. But I can't imagine what it would be like in this heat, and this weather, trying to weed wheat, or get out there and weed a crop in the field. But there is one thing that I know, I don't know about you, but when you get done weeding a garden and it's all cleaned up and the rows are all nice and straight, there's a sense of satisfaction, isn't there? For some of you, you're nodding your head, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's that sense of satisfaction of, of a job well done, but also of that earth, that freshly tilled or worked soil. Some of you are blessed, your rows are a little wider, and you can just run a tiller down them. That looks really good. That nice brown dirt, freshly tilled up with no weeds in it. Some of you, maybe like me, you like to fill up a sprayer uh, with some chemicals, and you like to use chemicals to get rid of the weeds. And that's helpful for those weeds in the cracks of the driveway, the weeds around the sidewalks, and things like that, or the edge of the bed. But the danger of that is if the wind is blowing, as some of you well know, as I well know, you can sometimes get a little overspray and kill the very thing you're trying to weed. Here's the thing. I don't know about you, but cleaning and sorting is, while it can be difficult work and challenging, don't look in my office right now, I'm sorting. There's piles of things that I think I may want to keep, but you would probably tell me, just toss them. I'm not there yet. And then there's things that I've sorted out and thrown in the trash pile. There's things that I need to refile, and there's things that I'm just not sure of. So I've got piles everywhere. The satisfaction is, is when all of a sudden I can see the desk. There's a glimpse because I've cleared enough stuff and thrown enough things away. So there's satisfaction in sorting things out. And some of you know what I'm talking about. Today we're going to talk about sorting, and I invite you to take your outlines in hand this morning. There's three things that I want to talk about this morning. Three things. Actually, probably four when we get done, but three that are in the outline. You see, we live in a culture where everything is being sorted and labeled, valued and discarded. And, and this message today can be challenging and frustrating if you really listened clearly. I don't know about you, but uh, when I go out to the store today, I'm, I'm sorting. I'm sorting all those that are wearing masks and those that aren't, and I'm passing judgments. But here's the reality today. We can't make the assumptions that we want to because we don't know what the medical conditions are or what people might struggle with breathing or where they're at. And, but you know what? Whether I want to 
admit it or not, when I go to the store, I, I sort and I judge. Today, we're explained, Jesus explains to us that today we're not to do that. Some of us like to do it. We walk into a room and we look at everybody as I'm looking at each of you and I look at what you're wearing and I put some of you in this category and some of you in this category. And maybe there's a third category. Or what accent do you have? I mean, all of you have seen the person that somehow got out of the house, they're wearing plaid on plaid or polka dots on plaid. I mean, it's summertime, right? You wear loud and audacious colors and shirts, and sometimes you see somebody and you just go, oh my, it just doesn't work. But you know what I'm talking about. Or maybe we sort people by the color of the skin that they have, or the kind of car they're driving, or what bumper stickers on the back of their car, or what church they attend, or what news network they watch. Whether we want to admit it or not, we're always pulling up weeds. We're always sorting. It's just human nature. But this morning, the text says to us, you know what? I'm God, and I'm going to do the sorting. And I'm going to do the weeding. And I don't know about you. That can be challenging. But let's turn to the text again. Let's look at some realities today. The first reality is this. As Christians and non-Christians in the world today, we have to understand something. We have to understand that we have to coexist together. We need to coexist in the world. Now, that should make a lot of sense to us, but... There's this warning for us in the world, you know what? We sometimes don't want to. It's been said about Sunday morning that it's the most segregated moment and time in the, in the world today. Because for some places of worship we have, and some people that worship, we have this country club mentality. It's, it's about us and it's about them. And Jesus wants to look at us today and say, no, that's not what's supposed to be happening. Because if it's about us and them, then how are they ever to learn about me? Says Jesus. How are they ever to come to know about Christ? And so this idea is to be in the world, but not of the world, just as Jesus modeled it with his own life. He was able to walk through the world and change those around us by the way that he treated them those that didn't know him. And so this idea that we want to weed out the weeds, if we did that, there would be nobody to bring to Christ. That would be a sad day. A sad day. The second thing in here is, is I think it's important that uh, in this first thought is that, you know, it's a call for you and I. It's a call for you and I. If we're to coexist that means for some of us, we've got to change our thought process because we've been so focused on taking up our hoes and we've been so busy eating that we've totally missed who's around us. We've totally missed it. We aren't even noticing. We're just so focused on the weeds that we aren't seeing the person the person that, if we read and understand Scripture, God reminds us that He created. And so I would tell you that there's a force in the world today that is desperately wanting to divide us, desperately wanting people in the world today to see people as being either in or out. And that's not good for building a harvest for the kingdom. That's not good for building community today. And we need to realize, we just need to let God do the sorting. We need to go out and be followers of Jesus Christ. We need to go out into the world and be instruments of grace and mercy and justice in the world today. And so often we just want to weed. Because if we're honest, there's satisfaction in weeding. If we're honest, it makes us feel better. 
The second thing that we need to understand is this. The second thing is this. God not only is going to be doing the sorting, but his sorting is different than ours. And so hold that thought because we're going to come back to it. But the other thing that we need to understand is that Christians and non-Christians often look exactly alike. And I don't know about you, but you know what I'm talking about. I know what that means. I've, I've been out there and I've made the assumption that somebody's a follower of Jesus Christ only to find out that they don't even have a faith walk and they don't have a church family. But the reason why I made that assumption is because they were such a good person. And they were always so helpful and so kind and I just assumed that they were a believer in Jesus Christ. And then there are those, and you know who I, what I'm talking about, there are those that they leave church on Sunday and on Monday morning, you wouldn't know that they were Christians by how they act and by how they treat the world around us. And so while they may look like you and I, they don't necessarily always act like we're called to. And so the important thing for us to understand and what the text points out is that the weeds and the weeds sometimes are totally indiscernible. You cannot tell the difference. And my thought for you today would be, we need to be different internally and externally. While we may look alike, our actions need to be different. We need to be visibly different. That's what made the early church so powerful. If we read in Acts and we read in Paul's letter, the word of the Lord was going out and the church was growing in a world where it was a Roman world and there was division and yet the church was growing. Why was it growing? Because they did the unexpectable and the unexpected. They shared all their food, they shared all their toys, they shared all their resources, they were ready to help at a moment's notice. I'm just curious, in the past year, how many of you have taken the time to help a neighbor? Raise your hand. Keep doing it. Don't let it be once a year. Let it be a weekly or monthly occurrence. And maybe it's not the neighbor. Maybe it's the neighbor's neighbor or somebody you just heard about. How many of you have loaned them your prize riding lawnmower or tiller or piece of equipment, chainsaw, not worrying about what might happen to it, but more being willing to share because you wanted to help them. That's what we're being called to do. And sometimes in today's world, that can be difficult. The reality is this, we're not to do the sorting. And because we so often look alike, then that kind of relieves us of that burden. But for some of us, we take the challenge to heart and we try to find differences and reasons to sort. And we have to remember that God does the sorting and his sorting is different. The third point this morning is Christians and non-Christians are destined to an eternal difference. And for this, I need to invite you to turn with me to verses 38 and 39. And, and we read in the text, I'll read it to you again. The one who has sowed the good seed is the Son of Man, and the field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom, and the weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. And the weeds will be pulled up, gathered, and burned in the fire. And for those that are the seed of the Son of Man, we will sit at His feet, and we will praise Him, and we will gather with fellow believers. There is an eternal difference between those who are weeds and those who are not. The challenge, I think, this morning is 
is not only to understand that, but that, I don't know, that should bring you to your knees because I don't know about you. Some of us know friends and family and people that are not followers of Jesus Christ. And I don't want that to be their end. A burning fire. I don't want that to happen to them. A man by the name of Garrett Kaiser tells a story in his memoir, A Dresser of Sycamore Trees, The Finding of Ministry. And he talks about how he was sorting. And he's at a grocery store buying bananas to take to an older man he visits regularly. And in front of him as he checks out is a woman with multiple orders and multiple forms of payment. Kaiser feels a little smug about his good deed and he's judging a lady buying what he seen, deems trivial, odds and ends, and doing so slowly, which means he's waiting and he's impatiently wanting to get on with his good deed. He writes, I watched her walk to her vehicle feeling that same uncharitable impulse that makes us glance at the driver of the car we passed just to get a look at the jerk that cut us off. She got into the driver's seat of a van marked with the name of a local nursing home, filled to capacity with elderly men and women who had no doubt handed her their wish lists and checkbooks as soon as she had turned off the ignition in the parking lot. How many of us often look at the driver and the other car as we pass them and we make a judgment? This idea that we're not to judge because sometimes the person that we're judging is simply living out their call and their life for the kingdom. And we may not get the privilege like Garrett did to see what they're doing. So here's the challenge today. Here's the challenge, I think, for us, because I, I read a quote from Brennan Manning, and, and, and I'm struck by this reality that it's simply not enough today to just look like a Christian. It's just not enough today to say, hey, I do my devotions in the morning. Hey, I go to church on Sunday. Hey, I listen to praise music all week long. It's not enough. This is what Jesus is talking about. He's looking for servants that are willing to let him do the sorting, but are still willing to work in the fields. And so the first thing today I would tell you is you need to surrender your life to Christ. If you haven't done that, if you're listening with us today, I invite you to surrender your life to Christ and let go of the reins of control because when it comes down to it, we have to let go of the means that we're using to weed. We have to set that aside. And leave that in God's hands. That's what we have to do. But I don't know about you, sometimes it's really hard and I want to hold on to my weeder. I'm going to let go. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I don't know about you, if you read this passage, and I invite you to go back tonight and this week and reread this passage, the last paragraph should convict you. There's an eternal difference this is real and this is serious. And I don't know about you, but I want to share Christ with as many people as I can. So that at the end of the day, there aren't as many weeds as there are today. Which if you've been out in your garden and came back from being gone three weeks, I don't know where the weeds came from. But the evil one was certainly out there throwing seed out. When you give it a month on its own, they come up out of everywhere. Here's a quote from Brennan Manning. He said, and, and this I think speaks to the challenge that we have because here's the reality of what, has, what happens if we don't. The greatest single cause of atheism in the world today, the greatest single cause of atheism in the world today is Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips 
and deny him with their lifestyle. That is what an unbelieving world finds absolutely unbelievable. And so my question for you today is how are you willing to be good seed, to be bearing fruit for the kingdom, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ? Because you know what, if we talk about reconciliation and continue to sow divisiveness, if we talk about forgiveness and being forgiven yet still nurture grudges and resentment, we cannot talk about being servants of the Lord, of a loving God, without loving like Jesus does. I, can, I think of the vows that we make when we become a member of this church. And as members of First Church and followers of Jesus Christ, we need to remember that promise. And we say when we make our vows as new members that we will walk in the spirit of Jesus Christ, in love and in fellowship with the church, seeking the things that make for unity, purity, and peace. But that's not divisiveness. And so we need today to leave the sorting to God, to go out into the world full of grace and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. With that in mind, I've got a couple questions just to share with you. They're in your bulletin today. And that is, what have you metaphorically wanted, or when and where have you metaphorically wanted to pull up the weeds that surround you and make sure that nothing you didn't plant grew in your surroundings? And here's a question. Did you act on that urge? And why? And on what basis? The second question is this. When do you find yourself judging others? And why? On what basis are you judging them? And three, have you ever felt judged by someone? Did you think their judgment fair and accurate? I'm just curious about that. And I would throw a fourth one in there that's in your bulletin. I would tell you that you and I need to plan today and we're called to tend plants today so that there will be a harvest at the end of the season. We're halfway through the summer, and I'll guarantee you today that there's at least one person that you need to tend to that doesn't know Jesus Christ. And as I share that statement with you today, I know that the Lord is putting someone on your heart right now. I would invite you to write that name down when you get home or later today, or grab a piece of paper, write that name down today. I want you to pray for that person. Not just today, but tomorrow and every day for the next month. And then I can't wait to hear what happens as we tend the garden that God has given us. So remember this today, that it's God that's going to do the sorting. And his sorting is always different than ours, but you and I are called to be his servants in a world that desperately needs to hear the good news in the face of what's happening in the world today. We desperately need news of hope, and for that we say thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, so thankful for your word. So thankful for your encouragement to, to do differently than the world does today. To look at the field and the harvest and, and, and while we may see weeds, Lord, you call us to leave them be in the hopes that as they intertwine with the wheat and the harvest that they too will be touched by your spirit and moved to accept you as their Lord and Savior. And so today, Lord, as, as we tend the fields in our lives, God, I ask that you would give us patience, for we confess that we're not always so patient as you would like us to be. We want to do the pruning. We want to change the people around us now, and we think that they need a little help. And so we'll do anything to get them to see the error of their ways and, and to change and sometimes, Lord, you just invite us to be patient and be willing to be with them, to be present in their lives. And 
repent to God and we confess that sometimes that's really hard. And so today we also ask that you would give us courage because there are those in the world that would condemn us for doing that. And so we ask that you would give us strength as well. And when we falter, Lord, we ask that you would just pick us up and carry us so that we might make a difference for you in the world today. So that one more person this week and next week and the week after and the day after would come to know and declare that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. So they might join us in an eternal death destiny at your feet. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. At this time, I want to invite the praise team to come forward. If you're worshiping with us online, um, this is a time when we tr traditionally take an offering. Today, we will not be passing the plate here. But you'll notice on your screen that there's multiple ways that you can give. And I just want to say thank you to all of you that have been faithful over the months and during this time of COVID when we, for many um, weeks and months, we weren't able to gather. Um, you have been an incredible blessing. You can give both online or you can text. And those slides are on screen giving you instruction. At this time, uh, Greg and Scott are going to share with us a song, and I just invite you to listen to the words of this song. The song's... Yeah, Scott. The song was uh, written by a band called Big Ten Revival. And uh, it's, the band is um, something I, Greg brought me to when I was just a much younger musician. And uh, it kind of is the thing that got me rolling. So uh, it's really cool to do this with Greg, and I hope you enjoy it.
Lord, we present these tokens of the many blessings you have poured into our lives. Make us people who are unafraid to proclaim your healing mercies. Make us people who are unafraid to go out into the world today and share the good news. And help us to take these gifts to bring hope and comfort to all those that are in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
you to hold out your hands and receive the blessing. Brothers and sisters, you and I are seeds planted in the world today. As we've learned, we're called to go, to go out and be a blessing, be an instrument of God's grace and love in the world today. And so go, go with the love of God, go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and go with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, in whose name we pray, amen. Oh. 